University of Houston provides many opportunities for students to get involved outside of the classroom. One such organization that allows students to participate outside of school is the Cougar Band. The band contributes to the excitement and thrill of U of H basketball and football. I'm Milton Lawrence, and today on Video Workshop, we'll take an in-depth look at the University of Houston Cougar Band. <laughs> You know, no college football game would be complete without the colorful and fast-paced halftime show, nor would it be as exciting without the enthusiasm and support of the college band. At the University of Houston, the band provides its members with very special friendships and experiences that only a university band can provide. Now with a report about the history and background of the University of Houston band is Susan Erickson. The University of Houston Marching Band was organized in 1946 under the direction of W.I. Shepard, its first director. The band wore white slacks, red shirts, and cadet caps. In 1955, the band came under the direction of James Warren, a former student of the university. The band had grown to three times the size it had been in 1946. James T. Matthews became the, the director in 1957 and improved the band by emphasizing its importance as a concert organization. In the fall of 1969, William C. Moffitt, organizer of Patterns in Motion, became the marching band director. Moffitt arranged the fight song in the University of Houston alma mater, along with hundreds of other songs for the band. In 1981, Greg Telford became director of the marching band, in an, and in 1983, the band traveled to Tokyo, Japan to participate in the Mirage Bowl. In 1984, Robert Mays became the current marching band director at the University of Houston. During his first year as director, the band traveled to Dallas to perform at the Cotton Bowl. The Cougar Band is one of the most exciting university band programs in the state of Texas. The University of Houston University Park all qualified students, regardless of their major field of study, may be members of the Cougar Marching Band. In fact, nearly 70% of the members currently in the organization are non-music majors. There are three organizations in the Cougar Band. The largest is the Marching Band, which performs at all home football games, as well as some out-of-town games with other Southwest Conference schools. The Marching Band also performs at bowl games, parades, and even does high school exhibitions. All University of Houston home football games are played in the Astrodome, where the temperature is always a comfortable 70 degrees. The marching band practices three days a week, two hours a day. Students receive two semester hours of physical education credit for a semester of participation in the marching band. The Cougar Brass plays at all home basketball games at the university, as well as traveling to postseason tournaments. All members of the Cougar Brass are members of the marching band. The Cougar Dolls is a dance team that performs at football and basketball games. The members of the Cougar Dolls are chosen by auditions for dancing ability, personality, appearance, and physical fitness. Diane Mays, wife of Robert Mays, is the director of the Cougar Dolls. Mrs. Mays selects uniforms and music that the dolls use, as well as choreographing the routines for halftime football and basketball games. Kappa Kappa Psi is the National Honorary Band Fraternity, and Tau Beta Sigma is the band sorority. These organizations operate primarily as student service and leadership recognition societies who assist the band director in developing the leadership and the enthusiasm that he requires of his band. Chapter responsibilities include numerous concentrated service projects, as well as providing the intangible items of morale, spirit, enthusiasm, and good attitudes within the band. The band the marching band rehearses in the band annex and in the rehearsal hall of the Fine Arts Building. The band practices marching behind Hoffine's Pavilion. The current band annex is going to be torn down, and according to Chancellor Van Horn, work is underway in the administration to provide a new building for the band, which will be located near the athletic fields around Hoffine's Pavilion. The university provides the members of the band with uniforms, per percussion equipment, tubas, French horns, euphoniums, and tenor saxophones. It also pays for transportation to and from games, hotel rooms, and money for meals. Scholarships are available to music majors of outstanding ability through the School of Music of the University of Houston. 
Also banned grants and aid are available for students of any major field of study for participation in the Cougar Marching Band. The number of students joining the band is increasing. There are over 150 members in the Horn Line, Drum Line, Flag Corps, and Cougar Dolls. Students join the band for many reasons, to gain new friendships, to travel, and to have fun. The band is an organization that depends on its members to work together and strive for excellence. While the marching band performs at all home football games, it also travels to out-of-town games with other Southwest Conference schools and to bowl games. All expenses are paid by the university for these trips, and the students have fun traveling to different places. For the football games between the Houston Cougars and the TCU Horned Frogs, the band traveled to Fort Worth. Traveling to football games with a marching band can be an interesting experience. When the Cougar Marching Band travels, it requires five charter buses plus an equipment truck in order to transport nearly 200 people and their equipment. Everyone is responsible for his or her instrument, uniform, and personal luggage on band trips. <laughs> The Cougar Band was traveling to Fort Worth in order to perform at the University of Houston versus TCU football game. The game was on a Saturday, and the band made the trip up on Friday afternoon. The band arrived at the Amon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth at 4.30 in the afternoon. Equipment was unloaded, and the band rehearsed for about an hour, making last-minute adjustments and polishing the show for the game the next day. The Cougar Marching Band prides itself on being the only Southwest Conference band that memorizes its music for halftime shows. This is only possible with members working hard during rehearsals and having a desire to present a more aesthetic show without unsightly music folders on the field. Also, memorizing music allows the students to more fully concentrate on the marching aspect of the show. After the rehearsal, the band loaded the buses and headed for the Fort Worth Hilton, where they stayed that night. The band was free to do whatever they wanted until 12.30 Saturday, when the buses had to be loaded and everyone checked out of the rooms. On Saturday morning, some of the band members visited the Fort Worth Water Gardens. Marching 
band is a, probably the best organization I've ever been in. Uh, provides me with many, many opportunities to laugh and to make other people laugh. Uh, being in the band also, I guess, has given me a sense of responsibility. I enjoy band. I enjoy marching. They help keep me in shape. <laughs> Somewhat. The band here is an experience. <laughs> you get to meet a lot of people. Some you want to continue with, some you may not want to, but it's fun. You get to know a lot of people, and you have a lot of fun. When the band arrived at the stadium, members unloaded equipment and assembled to enter the stadium. Members of the Kappa Kappa Psi fraternity are responsible for loading and transporting the U of H Cougar Band Spirit Bell to football games. During the game, after every U of H score, the bell is rung and fans count to indicate the total number of points that the Cougars have scored. It is a long-standing tradition at the University of Houston football games. During halftime, the band performed its show for the crowd. After the Cougars had won the game, the band loaded up and headed home. During basketball season, the marching band can perform in the Cougar Brass. This organization is comprised of about 40 brass and percussion players who play before and after games, as well as during halftime and timeouts. The Cougar Brass plays at all home basketball games, as well as Southwest Conference tournament action and all NCAA postseason tournaments. Brass provides music and team support at the University of Houston home basketball games. This organization is made up of brass and percussion players that are in the marching band. Since the number of places in the Cougar Brass is limited, auditions are held prior to basketball season for players who are interested in being in the Cougar Brass. Unlike the marching band, the Cougar Brass does not rehearse on a regular basis. If a rehearsal is needed, Mr. Mays will call for one at a time that is convenient for the members. The Cougar Brass is always in demand in the local community to play at various functions. Members of the Brass volunteer their time to play at these worthwhile events.
The cougar brass uses trumpets, trombones, wrench horns, euphoniums, tubas, and various percussion players. The cougar brass is considered by many to be the best of its kind in the country. Brass not only plays music for the fans and the basketball team, but it also provides music for the cougar dolls to dance to during halftime. When the Cougar Dolls are not dancing, they are cheering for the U of H basketball team. Many fans have commented that it is the band, dolls, and cheerleaders who bring the great college enthusiasm to the basketball games. And this, they say, makes coming to the games very enjoyable. The man in charge of the Cougar Band is Mr. Robert Mays. He's the director of the Cougar Brass and also the marching band. Now with an interview with Mr. Mays is again Susan Erickson. Robert Mays is a native of Midland, Texas and received his Bachelor of Music Education and his Master's of Music Education from Texas Tech University. After teaching at Robert E. Lee High School in Midland, he was appointed Assistant Director of Bands at Texas Tech University from 1974 to 1980. He was then appointed Director of Bands at the University of Wyoming. Mr. Mays joined the faculty of the School of Music at the University of Houston in 1984. Thank you for being here My today pleasure. with us. Thanks being the director of the band is such an exciting job. Is this something that you've always wanted to do? You're right. It is a very exciting job. I can't remember any time that I uh, thought about doing anything else. And uh, it's, uh, I enjoy it very much, and I'm very fortunate to be able to do it. The halftime shows play such a big part in the mm -hmm. marching band. How do, how do you go about designing the halftime shows? Well, to begin designing a show, we usually try to come up with some sort of theme whether that's a musical theme or a design theme in the concept, it makes it a little easier to put it together from beginning to end. Uh, then we sit down with a piece of paper, graph paper, it looks like graph paper, it's a football field, and start putting the designs on the, the charts, as we call them, and design the charts uh, various ways and should see how thing moves around and then try to coordinate that with the music that we're performing. And it all just develops in, through a process, a long process, but. Uh, it takes a while to do. 
when you're picking your music theme, does it usually start out with, you know, where you're going to be playing or what type of audience? That, that's a good point, yes. There are so uh, many songs, it must be hard to choose. It's, it's difficult because uh, the crowds that we play for at the football games, uh, there's great variety in the age. Uh, some mm -hmm. people like to hear the military band, the standard march uh, tunes that we play. Others like show tunes. Others like the college students like the popular uh, music that's being played now. So in designing the show, we hope to have something possibly for everybody in the audience. Uh, they've always, the rule of thumb is that if you have a, somebody leave the game whistling a tune you played at halftime, that you uh -huh. had a successful performance. And so uh, when we select the music along with the theme thing. We try to have something that everybody, not all from just modern music or from past music, but something that everybody can enjoy. So for your rehearsals, you usually start out working inside, you know, working over the music and then go outside. You practice without playing usually? And well, then yeah, it depends. It really depends. At the first of the week, we usually pass out the music. We change our shows quite a bit. And so the first Monday rehearsal, we'll have uh, all the students inside learning the new music and going over the, the performing the music and rehearsing the music, usually putting it on tape uh, so we can practice with that music as we're learning design. In that rehearsal, the first hour of rehearsal, we also use the uh, uh, chalkboard and show them how the designs are going to go, hand out the charts that we may be using to describe positions on the field and go over the maneuvers that we'll be doing outside. Communication is very difficult outside because of the distance between you and the students. Even though we have a microphone system we use, it's, it's a lot easier to talk to them inside when right. we're sitting down and, and rehearse those, those things like that. Then we head outside and uh, put it together on the field and, and get these positions uh, together. And that's when we use a lot of our student help and student coordination. How long does it usually take to prepare a halftime show? Well, the rule of thumb is it usually takes about 10 hours of preparation for one hour of one, excuse me, one minute of performance. So a standard seven or eight minute show that we would do usually takes about 70 hours of preparation. It takes a lot of time lot to of arrange time. the music and to make sure that when you go put dots on the mm. page for 200 people, that takes an awful lot of time and a lot of, uh, of coordinated effort. Uh, what about the students? Do you find that they have to maybe limit the number of classes that they take because they need extra time for preparing? Well, we hope not. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it, well, they don't coordinate their schedules about what they can take uh, other than that time that we have. We meet three days a week and uh, have no class on Tuesday and Thursday. But hopefully, if I'm organized and I do my homework and the students work well in rehearsal, that we can prepare our portion of, of the, the halftime in the given amount of time. It's very common thought around that, that students have to have extra rehearsals and extra things like mm -hmm. they do in high school to, per, to be in the university band, and, and that's just not, not true. Really the case. Yeah, we try very hard to limit the amount of time that they have. And if you can imagine, see all those students... Work hard while you're there. They, they are, and they're, they're at the age where they're, they're uh, better than even the seniors in high school. They've had at least that much experience. So when they get into college, they've been through at least four years of high school. Right. And they catch on very quickly, and they're better players, and it's, it's easier that way. In so the you, given time. you recruit a lot of high school people usually. Oh, yes. We spend time recruiting. We spend many, many hours recruiting. We, I personally go to as many high mm -hmm. schools as I can. We run the, the band day at the University of Houston, try to get students on the campus. Uh, our admissions department helps us a lot, naming kids that have applied that are interested in band, and uh, that's an ongoing thing, just like athletics. The better the players are, musicians are, the better your band's going to be. So we try to get, and we've been pretty successful getting quality students in our program here. Right. You play in a number of parades here in town. What are some of these functions that you help out with? Yeah. Uh, we get calls uh, almost daily to perform in the parade here at Parade There. And uh, like you said, we were talking about before, it's hard to decide which ones we can do and not have all the time. The students take them out of class, et cetera, to uh, do march a parade. We do our, our campus parades here, our homecoming parade, et cetera. We do uh, the Mardi Gras parade in Galveston, 
and uh, some some smaller groups do smaller parades, like they'll do a thing at the med center for a special cause or this. But uh, we sounds, try to keep it down a little bit so the students don't miss school. It in order sounds to play. like they have a real lot of fun. Well, thank I hope you, they do. Yeah, thank you very uh, much. The spirit and the enthusiasm of the band members has been captured and put together in the U of H fight song in the next feature. <laughs> Well, I hope you've enjoyed this behind-the-scenes look of the University of Houston Cougar Band. As you can see, members of the band are very hard-working individuals, working together to represent their school in a very special way. Members are proud of their accomplishments, yet seek no personal glory. College band life is a very unique experience and a very worthwhile one. I'm Milton Lawrence, and from all of us at Video Workshop, thanks for watching. Today's video workshop was produced by Mike Davis and directed by Mike Davis and Steve Pratt. This program is a laboratory production of the School of Communication of the University of Houston. All participants are students under the supervision of Bill Bryan, executive producer, and Steve Pindus, production manager for KUHT. Jim Kuva is associate producer. The views expressed on this program are not necessarily those of the sponsoring organization. Video Workshop is recorded in the studios of KUHT Channel 8, Houston.